Hello and welcome to Reflections. I'm your host, Mark Huntley. On this episode, we cover two events with one purpose, helping people from diverse backgrounds come together to make respect and understanding a growing reality. Unifying events don't always happen in large cities. Some take place in quiet towns just around the corner. An example, Palmer Township, Pennsylvania. There, Lehigh Dialogue Center held its first annual Dinner for Peace and Dialogue. Officials from government, business, education, and other institutions joined their fellow citizens in a meeting of cultures and faiths. The program started with words from LDC President Mr. Abdullah Bozkurt. We at the center believe that lack of the dialogue on either side of the aisle is the major reason behind today's global problems that have cascading effects on the local communities that we live in. We take our mission motto from famous uh, thinker Mawlana Jalaluddin Rumi. He says, come, come, whoever you are. Come even if you have broken your walls thousands of times. Come and come yet again. Ours is not caravan of despair. So our doors is open to everybody no discrimination on the basis of religion, culture, ethnic background, or whatever you name it. Reverend Dr. Walter Wagner of Moravian Seminary addressed some of the challenges of dialogue. Obviously we live in a world that is, and in a nation that has serious, controversial, and expensive needs, as well as risks and opportunities. Food, shelter, health care, the globalized economy, meaningful work, the care of the planet's atmosphere, water and temperature are just a few of the items on lists of desperate causes that need to be addressed. These are not only matters of dollars and cents, but of life and death, of conflict and peace, of justice and morality. I think this is a very good start uh, to promote the relationships of personal relationships, especially eating together, it is a start to rub shoulders with each other, to share a table, and it provides a way for us to look further where we can go deeper into our own faiths and then how we can understand one another, the commonalities as well as the differences. Muslim scholar Bekir Aksoy stressed the importance of personal communication. There is not a single religion in the world which can show me a single clergyman who would claim with a worthy of name that this religion has come down upon, upon earth in order to kill the rest of humanity. Each one of them says, do two things. One, train your own members in your own religion, give them the catechism, and learn how to pray, how to know God, how to obey Him. Second, treat the rest of humanity with love and compassion. Love thy neighbor. That is the phrase which is repeated everywhere and throughout the centuries in every religion. However, today we see that we are not doing our job. I am glad that such a small organization has provided such an opportunity for the first time or second time in years in this area that we came together at least for a dinner so that we can know one another in flesh and bones and blood. We are going to know that everybody is a person just like ourselves. There is a tremendous amount of prejudice against Islamic religion. There are tremendous amount of misinformation about Islamic religion. There are two reasons. If one reason is the ignorance of the outsiders to know about Islam, the second reason is the fault that the Muslims and the clergymen in Islam could not represent 
the religion well enough to to non Muslims. There is a small story in Islamic tradition which says that they ask the ant, Where are you going? The ant replied, I am going to Hajj, I am going to do pilgrimage, I am going to Mecca. With these feet, the ant, the information the ant replied is very informative. It said, I may not get there during my lifetime, but at least I am going to die on its way. In such a small gathering, we might not mean a lot for humanity, but at least we can die on this way. And when we are asked in the hereafter whether we have done our share, we can tell with tranquility in our heart that we have done our share. Having the variety in Islamic culture and tradition is a richness, actually, that we like. However, uh, it is also important that there are different political, ideological stands. Uh, sometimes the Westerners mix them up. Uh, as a clergyman, for example, as a man of religion, I have to stand up and say what uh, I think about Islam and how I understand and how I practice. Uh, they have to get to know us. Dr. Christine Nelson is an ordained minister from the United Church of Christ. She moved listeners with her holistic message. In the early 80s, there was again great need in the community. That's when homelessness began to show up. People sleeping on our park benches, in, under our bridges, out in the open. Catholic Charities and the Lehigh County Conference of Churches reasoned together that there should always be a hot meal provided in the city of Allentown and open to the larger community so that no one in need would ever go hungry. That was almost 25 years ago. And those two soup kitchens continue today. When we started those soup kitchens, our Jewish brothers and sisters came to the Conference of Churches and said, we want to be part of this. We want to care for people in, in need also. And so for 25 years, they have been working together with us. And now as the Muslim community has grown, our friends from the Islamic Center in the Lehigh Valley have also approached us and said, can we not join hands together? and reach out to people of any persuasion in our community who might be hungry. And so we all opened our arms to one another. And it is such a joy to see people of all the different faiths united in helping people help themselves. Having the food is wonderful. It gives us something light to talk about. And then we, the speeches by people challenge us to move deep, deeper to talk to each other about things of importance like working together to make this a, a very good world. Representatives of the government and law enforcement also spoke. Among them were Mr. James Doolin Jr., assistant special agent in charge at FBI offices in Philadelphia. The outreach program has developed a long time ago, and it, the efforts of it were to strengthen our ties in the communities. Uh, a lot of folks, unfortunately, view us as law enforcement, um, and, and that's it. Uh, it's important that us, that we, as the FBI, work in the communities. We not only work in those communities, but we also live and play and raise our families. Uh, so the outreach program is an effort by the uh, the FBI to, through law enforcement-based programs try to educate the community about what we are about and what we do in those communities. But it's also an opportunity for our agency to get to know our communities because we do live there. We do work, we play, uh, our children go to the schools. So it's important that we establish those strong bonds in those communities. Um, and also as part of that, getting to know and working in those communities is try to work with community groups and organizations like the Dialogue Center to try to identify areas where there are crime problems that we think we can apply some of our resources collectively with the community, with our law enforcement partners to try to make the community a, a safer place to live.